we're going to be going over electrical principles and technologies. So here's an example. So we have lightning here. So lightning is just basically a bunch of charges, electrical charges that occur. And this is a guy named Benjamin Franklin, and he was the one that gave the theory about laws of charges. And finally, here we also have just the normal power lines that we see in our cities that just give us electricity and transfer them. So in this video, part one, what are we going to learn about? So we're first going to learn about what is electricity. Second, we're going to learn about some examples of electricity. Third, we're going to go over the atomic model and get some connections with electricity with it. And finally, fourth, we're going to go over static and dynamic electricity. So this is just our part one video and later on we're also going to make a part two and part three video of this series. So make sure to check those videos out too. So now let's get started. So first of all, electricity is a bit like magic for many people. And this is because as soon as you turn on your light switch, you can see that the light automatically appears. So how does this happen? A lot of people don't know this, so that's why people think that electricity may be magic for them. So first of all, producing electricity is one of the challenges. So in order to produce electricity from just getting this light switch on, we can see that there's many different uh, challenges that we have. So first of all, we need to get the electricity. So there's different sources such as we can use the wind energy to get it, or we can use dams. So we're going to cover a little bit more about uh, these types of energies later on in this video. So this is just a short description of what electricity is. And now we're going to take an example of Alberta's electricity. So for those of you that don't know where Alberta is, Alberta is a province that is inside of Canada and here uh, mostly Alberta uses fossil fuels as their source of electricity for how they get it. So about 89% of electricity in Alberta is produced from fossil fuels. So approximately 36 is from coal and 54 is from natural gas. And finally the remaining 10 to 11% is produced from renewables such as wind, hydro and biomass. So we can see that Alberta, the province in Canada, is really high in fossil fuels and we use 89% of the electricity is from fossil fuels. So these are just some of the uh, places where we get it. This is just some fossil fuels here. So that we know that using a lot of fossil fuels is not good because then eventually when it's going to run out, we're, uh, we're not going to be able to get electricity for our own houses. So that's why we're trying to move on from uh, just using fossil fuels from going to wind energy, solar panels, and also hydro systems and biomass. So this is just an example of a fossil fueled electricity place. So now we're gonna cover further on what is electricity. So electricity is a type of energy. So basically electricity is a flow of electrons and electrons are negatively charged particles. So what happens is that when these electrons flow inside of a material, then we call it electricity. And here's just an example of electron. So this is the element copper. And we can see when we go to its atomic bottle, we can see here that there's electrons flowing around it. So the flow of electrons inside a material is called electricity. So we'll cover a little bit more about this uh, in the coming slides here. So now first, before covering inside the atomic model, we're going to cover over two types of electricity. So the first one we have is static electricity and static electricity is that there is no flow of electrons and it is a result of imbalance of positive and negatively charged only. So the electrons may remain stationary and do not move. So an example of this is when you shuffle your feet against a carpet, what happens is that all the electrons from your body are getting transferred onto the carpet and then those electrons just stay inside the carpet so they don't move. And then that results as an imbalance of positive and negatively charged particles since now you are positive ch positively charged and the carpet is negatively charged. And the electrons there remain stationary and they do not move. So that's basically what uh, static electricity is. And our second type of electricity is dynamic electricity or also called as current electricity. So basically dynamic electricity is the flow of electrons can be either in a single direction or it cannot be changing directions repeatedly. And it is either a direction current or alternating current. So dynamic electricity is basically just normal electricity, which is the flow of electrons. So an example is just by when you connect your power cord into the wall, the outlet, then you get your own something running. So that's just dynamic electricity when you get the flow of electrons. And another example here is alternating current. So this is how it looks like. 
and this is flowing current. So those are the two types of electricities, which are dynamic and also static. So now we're going to cover over Bohr's atomic model. So to explain electricity, we first need to zoom past the molecular and into the atomic level. So this is Bohr's atomic model, and basically this is for the element uh, cadmium. So here we can see that, I'm just going to explain a little bit of what it is. So in the middle here, in the middle there's uh, the forms of protons and neutrons. So in the middle, protons and neutrons are combined since they're really heavy. That's why they stay center in like this ball shape. And then there's electrons flowing around it. So all of these rings that carry these tiny balls, those are all electrons. So protons and neutrons form the nucleus, which is the middle, and electron, and the cloud of electrons. So this is either called just the rings of electrons or the clouds of electrons. So that's just a little bit about the atomic model. Cover how we got the name of electricity. So first of all, electrons are far lighter than protons, and that's why they're easily able to move. So if we look back into the same uh, atomic model, we can see that the electrons are moving in rings. Since they're really light, that's why they're orbiting the nucleus, which is the protons and the neutrons. Since those are really heavy, they stay in the middle, and then these electrons flow around it. And hence, that is how we get the name electricity, which is basically from the flow of electrons. So now we're going to cover over the electric current. So the movement of electrons forms electric current. So this is just a zoomed in picture of electrons. So we can see that they're all moving. And if, he's, if you see them in like a wire, then all of these electrons will look like this. They're all moving inside of this type of uh, uh, current. So this is called electrical current. And here's just an example of somebody's house where the electrical current of electrons, the flow of electrons is powering on these light bulbs here and they're flowing throughout this whole circuit. And that's basically it for part one of this video. So thank you so much for watching from Try To Be Useful, and we'll see you guys in our next video.